Pays du Cinéma is a French film magazine co-founded in 1951 by André Bazan, Jacques Doniel Valcroze, and Joseph Marie Lo Duca. It developed from the earlier magazine Revue du Cinéma involving members of two Paris film clubs, Objectif 49, Robert Brisson, Jean Cocteau, and Alexandre Astruc, among others, lit. Objective 49, and Cine Club du Cartier Latin. Initially edited by Doniel Valcroze and, after 1957, by Eric Romer, it included amongst its writers Jacques Rivette, Jean Luc Goddard, Claude Chabrol, and Francois Truffaut, who went on to become highly influential filmmakers. It is the oldest French language film magazine in publication. The first issue of Cahiers appeared in April 1951. Much of its head staff, including Bazan, Doniel Valcroze, Lo Duca, and the various younger, less established critics, had met and shared their beliefs about film through. Their involvement in the publication of Revue du Cinéma from 1946 until its final issue in 1948, Cahiers was created as a successor to this earlier magazine. Early issues of Cahiers were small journals of 30 pages which bore minimalist covers, distinctive for their lack of headlines in favor of film stills on a distinctive bright yellow background. Each issue contained four or five articles, most of which were reviews of specific films or appreciations of directors, supplemented on occasion by longer theoretical essays. The first few years of the magazine's publication were dominated by Bazan, who was the de facto head of the editorial board. Bazan intended Cahiers to be a continuation of the intellectual form of criticism that Review had printed, which prominently featured his articles advocating for realism as the most valuable quality of cinema. As more issues of Cahiers were published, however, Bazan found that a group of young protégés and critics serving as editors underneath him were beginning to disagree with him in the pages of the magazine. Goddard would voice his discontent with Bazan as early as 1952, when he challenged Bazin's views on editing in an article for the September issue of Cahiers. Gradually, the tastes of these young critics drifted away from those of Bazan, as members of the group began to write critical appreciations of more commercial. American filmmakers such as Alfred Hitchcock and Howard Hawks rather than the canonized French and Italian filmmakers that interested Bazan. The younger critics broke completely with Bazan by 1954, when an article in the January issue by Truffaut attacked what he called La Calité Française. Denouncing many critically respected French films of the time as being unimaginative, oversimplified, and even immoral adaptations of literary works. The article became the manifesto for the politique des auteurs, which became the label for Cahiers' younger critics' emphasis. On the importance of the director in the creation of a film, as a film's author and their re-evaluation of Hollywood films and directors such as Hitchcock. Hawks, Jerry Lewis, Robert Aldrich, Nicholas Ray, and Fritz Lang. Subsequently, American critic Andrew Saris latched onto the word, auteur, and paired it with the English word, theory, hence coining the phrase the auteur theory by which this critical approach is known in English language film criticism. After the publication of Truffaut's article, Doniel Valcroze and most of the Cahiers editors besides Bazan and Lo Duca rallied behind the rebellious authors, Lo Duca left Cahiers a year later. While Bazan, in failing health, gave editorial control of the magazine to Romer and largely left Paris, though he continued to write for the magazine. Now with control over the magazine's ideological approaches to film, the younger critics changed the format of Cahiers somewhat. Frequently conducting interviews with directors deemed auteurs and voting on films in a council of ten core critics. These critics came to champion non-American directors as well, writing on the mise en scène of such filmmakers as Jean Renoir. Roberto Rossellini, Kenji Mizoguchi, Max Offuls, and Jean Cocteau, many of whom Bazan had introduced them to. By the end of the 1950s, many of the remaining editors of Cahiers, however, were becoming increasingly dissatisfied with the mere act of writing film criticism. Spurred on by the return of Goddard to Paris in 1956, many of the younger critics became interested in making films themselves. Goddard, Truffaut, Chabrol, Doniel Valcroze, and even Romer, who had officially succeeded Doniel Valcroze as head editor in 1958, began to divide their time between making films and writing about them. The films that these critics made were experimental explorations of various theoretical, artistic, and ideological aspects of the film form, and would, along with the films of young French filmmakers outside the Cahiers circle, form the basis for the cinematic movement known as the French New Wave. Meanwhile, Cahiers underwent staff changes, as Romer hired new editors such as Jean Duchet to fill the roles of those editors who were now making films. While other existing editors, 
particularly Jacques Rivette, began to write even more for the magazine. Many of the newer critical voices largely ignored the films of the new wave for Hollywood when they were not outright criticizing them. Creating friction between much of the directorial side of the younger critics and the head editor Romer. A group of five K.A.'s editors, including Goddard and Doniel Valcros and led by Rivette, urged Romer to refocus the magazine's content on newer films such as their own. When he refused, the Gang of Five forced Romer out and installed Rivette as his replacement in 1963. Rivette shifted political and social concerns farther to the left, and began a trend in the magazine of paying more attention to non-Hollywood films. The style of the journal moved through literary modernism in the early 1960s to radicalism and then dialectical materialism by 1970. Moreover, during the mid-1970s the magazine was run by a Maoist editorial collective. In the mid-1970s, a review of the American film Jaws marked the magazine's return to more commercial perspectives, and an editorial turnover. It led to the rehabilitation of some of the old K.A.'s favorites, as well as some new filmmakers like Manolda Oliveira, Raul Ruiz, Ho Xiaoxian, Yusuf Shaing, and Maurice Pula. Recent writers have included Dany, André Teshine, Leos Carax, Olivier Assayas, Danielle Dubru, and Serge Le Perron. In 1998, the Editions de L'Etoile was acquired by the press group Le Monde. Traditionally losing money, the magazine attempted a makeover in 1999 to gain new readers, leading to a first split among writers and resulting in a magazine addressing all visual arts in a postmodernist approach. This version of the magazine printed ill-received opinion pieces on reality TV or video games that confused the traditional readership of the magazine. Le Monde took full editorial control of the magazine in 2003, appointing Jean-Michel Frodin as editor-in-chief. In February 2009, Cahiers was acquired from Le Monde by Richard Schlagman, also owner of Fidon Press, a worldwide publishing group which specializes in books on the visual arts. In July 2009, Stéphane Delorme and Jean-Philippe Tessé were promoted respectively to the positions of editor-in-chief and deputy chief editor. In February 2020, the magazine was bought by several French entrepreneurs, including Xavier Neal and Alain Wheel. The entire editorial staff resigned, saying the change posed a threat to their editorial independence. The magazine has compiled a list of the top 10 films of each year for much of its existence. Thanks for watching.